It has come as one of the most shocking responses from Mike Tyson after he sent back some ruinous words to Jake Paul for mimicking one of his most controversial moments in the boxing ring by biting an ear. After initially remaining silent about it, Mike Tyson has finally reacted to Jake Paul's mockery of him. You my girlfriend. I'm gonna make Mike my girlfriend. Mike Tyson found the footage so disrespectful and impolite and he's held none of his words back. Like in recent times, he's come at Jake Paul with an avalanche of insults and scary comments after another mischief from the problem child. Let's get straight at it. The baddest man on the planet has been ensuring that no single day of the build-up to the bout between himself and Jake Paul would be bland. From posting daily videos to sending strict warnings and exchanging words frequently, Mike Tyson has been taking every moment of this comeback with intense seriousness. Day three, you still want to fuck with me? Mike Tyson has come on the screen again, as it's been his recent routine, but there's no Rafael Cordero with him and there's no training session this time. Mike Tyson has come at Jake Paul for the ridiculous video he recently posted, where he chose to use one of Mike Tyson's most regretful boxing moments as an instrument of mockery. Mike Tyson insulted Paul and confessed that he chose to fight Paul because he thought he had repented from being the unskilled content creator he's always been. Is here. Oh my goodness, he's got a I accepted this challenge to fight a boxer. I never knew I was hopping in the ring with an unskilled content creator. I thought your victories against Borland and the other guys and your dream of being a world champion would bring you some seriousness. But you're a joker, son. You're so unskilled and poor at what you do. It's a sad moment for me, and I'll unleash the fury on you. I accepted the challenge to fight a boxer, one that was hungry and passionate about the many dreams he had to fulfill. But what I have right now is a YouTuber. That's quite sad, but I'm coming for you. Mike Tyson went ahead to predict two outcomes of their matchup on July 20th, and both predictions indicate a massive win for Tyson. Tyson has predicted that Paul could respond positively to a defeat from Tyson and bounce back by picking Mike Tyson as his hero and trainer to help rebuild his boxing career. Or that Paul responds so negatively that he quits his boxing career that hasn't even started. There can be only two outcomes of our matchup in the next few months. I either beat you so much that I end your boxing career completely before it starts at all or I beat you so much that you find me a hero that you need to learn from to have a successful boxing career. I either beat you to quit, or I beat you to have me teach you what it takes to be an undisputed world heavyweight champion. Moving on, Tyson then spoke directly about Jake's not post. You were to make a post in the build-up to a match against one of the greatest legends of a sport where you're still an amateur, and the only thing that an uncreative brain of yours could bring up was the memory of the match between me and Evander Holyfield. I fought 58 matches in my career for almost three decades. I had 50 wins. I got 44 knockout victories. Yet you couldn't bring up memories of any of those in your post. You couldn't imitate my best moments in the ring, but chose to always bring up one of my most painful losses like you did in your announcement video. You're such a retard, son. And truly, in the announcement video, Jake Paul was also seen with an opponent in the ring as well, and took turns to show the match between Tyson and Holyfield and the one between him and his partner. And just when Mike Tyson bit Holyfield's ear in the video, Jake Paul also bit off his partner's ear, following this with a brief statement. Is here. Oh my goodness, he's got a bloody right ear. Not only do I have the honor of fighting one of the two most famous boxers to ever live. Not only do I have the honor of fighting one of the two most famous boxers to ever live. It's also happening live on Netflix. Many have drawn from this statement and have made several speculations. Some speculations have come quite shockingly, while others are very insightful. A fan drew some insights from Jake Paul's statements, where he said he was fighting one of the two most famous boxers. According to him, Jake Paul didn't want to give so much praise to Tyson at the expense of his trainer. So even when he was trying to prove Tyson's greatness, he had to underestimate it to make his trainer look better. 
We know Holyfield is your trainer, but you didn't need to bring him into this. You underestimate a world champion by bringing in one of his fewest losses. That's sad. Is here. Oh my goodness, he's got a buddy right here. And not only do I have the honor of fighting one of the two most famous boxers to ever live. Another said, This is the poorest announcement video I've seen in all my life. Do I need to teach this YouTuber that when you do something like this, it's like a trailer where you show the best parts? You claim he's a legend in the video and all, but you concentrated on one of his losses. Go learn, bro. You're just a lucky YouTuber who's been on the good side of some affluence you don't deserve. The responses from the fans aren't odd in any way. They've shed some light on a statement many other fans and professionals alike never paid attention to. One more fan has this to say. One of the two most famous boxers. What's Holyfield doing in this video and why honor him better than the main character here? Maybe you couldn't find videos of Tyson versus Spinks, but that made more sense than this trash you put up. We know Holyfield has been training you, but let's be honest, in terms of legacy, Holyfield can't lace Mike Tyson's boots. Many now feel that Jake Paul has been making so many references to the 1997 fight in order to promote his trainer at the expense of Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, however, still had more words for Jake Paul. He was so dissatisfied with Jake Paul's recent video that he kept repeating that no statement of his can perfectly represent the exact way he felt about it. But he added, This is the dumbest and most disgusting video I've ever seen. You've been trying to ridicule me to honor your damn coach in a match I'll be fighting. You're so dumb. I never knew it was this bad. But guess what, son? This has fueled me more to send you to a content creation class. You my girlfriend. I'm gonna make Mike my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Can't lack two minutes in my world, bitch. I'll fuck you till you love me. Tyson seemed to have forgotten his earlier prediction where he claimed his win could make Jake Paul look up to him for boxing lessons so as to revive his career. Tyson canceled that option. And now, Jake Paul is left with just one thing. To quit boxing after the matchup and take courses on content creation to remain significant in at least one aspect. Tyson then went on to insist Jake Paul had run out of content ideas. You clearly don't have enough knowledge of what you do on YouTube. Once I beat you, you'll realize boxing isn't for you, and you'll start going to the place where you ought to be. You'd return to the class. I have nothing more to say to you. My remaining talks will be made with my hands when I beat you in the ring. After that, the Dallas Cowboys will make me a statue for shredding you to pieces. What has surprised many is the similarity of this video and the announcement video of Jake Paul two weeks ago. And many have questioned why Jake has been repeating his contents. He seemed to be out of posting ideas, like Tyson said. In the announcement video, after showing videos of Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield, Jake Paul had some boastful comments to make about the match and some more details to provide. Netflix was where we watched movies until now. This is the first ever professional live sport event on Netflix, and with Netflix in over 500 million households and over 260 million subscribers, we plan on this being the biggest fight of the 21st century, dummy. This is a most valuable promotions event. My first time fighting in the stadium, Dallas, Texas. Like he was expecting chaos after the announcement, he then brought up some humorous scenes where he said, Oh, you're mad at me for fighting Mike Tyson. Imagine this. Exactly. That's what I thought. July 20th. Be there, good boy. He then brought up an old video of Mike sending words to an opponent. Make you my girlfriend. I'm gonna make Mike my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. oh. Funnily, Jake repeated Mike's words again and hurled them at Mike. And after so much trolls at Tyson, Jake Paul then said, I'm just so glad to step into the ring with one of the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champions there's ever been. My style is impetuous, my defense is impregnable, and on July 20th, I promise you, I'll come out victorious. While Mike Tyson had some reasonable points to make about Jake Paul's buying video, many have questioned his recent fussiness and questioned why he's beginning to have endless issues with Jake Paul. To them, Jake Paul is known for controversies and Tyson shouldn't get stained by getting in the mud with Jake, but should focus on his fight.
They have termed it an unreasonable approach to a fight that wouldn't in any way end well for the 57-year-old former undisputed world heavyweight champion. One fan reacted and said, The only things I've been impressed by with Tyson lately are his training sessions. Every other thing he does just seems crazy and odd in some type of way. Famous member of the Mayweather family and former IBO junior lightweight champion Jeff Mayweather had this to say about the antics of Mike Tyson and Jake Paul in the build-up to their matchup four months away. I should think that Tyson's got a... Uh... I think Tyson's got a, Tyson's got a chance. Yes, I do. I, I really think he does a... I think that he's, he's faster. He's still faster than Jake Paul. I mean, I still see Mike I think Tyson. he's faster too? Yeah, he's faster. I feel Mike Tyson and Jake Paul are really crazy about the publicity of this fight, and they're doing everything possible to ensure no minute is boring. But I'm not sure that's the way out. Well, can they just have their matchup already? In similar fashion, another fan said, I'm really getting tired of this buildup. Mike Tyson comes every time with something new to say. He's seeming so desperate. Even the current boxers don't pull off so many publicity stunts. Their heated face-offs begin a few weeks before their fights. But Tyson and Jake are just acting so naive and desperate. I feel too many cooks spoil the brook. They both should stay off for some time. An American boxing fan who's found only the training interesting as well said, Tyson, only your training videos are enough. You're making a lot of points and sending enough messages with them. I don't think you should add to that. Coming to our faces every time to say trash about people will ruin your legacy more than a loss against Jake Paul. We respect you so much but you could just have a little sit back and stick with your trainings. Stop bringing up bad memories of you that we've chosen not to remember for so long. One more fan has gone off at both fighters for doing more than the fight demanded. It's not even a Joshua versus Fury, and you both are making it look extraordinary. It's a 57-year-old versus a 27-year-old fight. It's like a soccer preseason match. And who goes crazy over a preseason match? Just wake me on July 29th when you're ready to fight and we'd watch. Contrastively, one fan seemed so much interested with all of these going on and said, Tyson should know that he's got so much influence in boxing to pull out a crowd anywhere in the world. But I'm enjoying what he's doing with Jake Paul. It seemed like a Tom and Jerry fight, where they both seem to be talking good of each other today, and suddenly they're at loggerheads tomorrow. Really, Jake Paul has successfully brought Disney to boxing. As much as Jake Paul called for this, supporters felt Tyson doesn't need to respond to every of Jake Paul's posts. They expect so much from him being the legend he is. However, Mike Tyson's recent insults at Jake Paul have made fans recall his many willed acts off the ring, even while he was at his peak. Others have made reference to him having a troubling childhood and being haunted by it, even as an adult. And they have labeled this as the reason why Tyson can't seem to overlook any of Jake Paul's gimmicks. Mike Tyson was born in Fort Greene, Brooklyn, New York City, and has an older brother named Rodney and an older sister named Denise, who died of a heart attack at age 24. Tyson's mother was described as a promiscuous woman who might have been a prostitute. Tyson's biological father is listed as Purcell Tyson, a humble cab driver who was from Jamaica on his birth certificate but the man Tyson had known as his father was a pimp named Jimmy Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick was from Greertown, North Carolina, a predominantly black neighborhood that was annexed by the city of Charlotte, where he was one of the neighborhood's top baseball players. Kirkpatrick married and had a son, Tyson's half-brother, Jimmy Lee Kirkpatrick, who would help to integrate Charlotte High School football. Jimmy Kirkpatrick left his family not too long after and moved to Brooklyn, where he met Tyson's mother, Lorna Mae Smith Tyson. Kirkpatrick frequented pool halls, gambled, and hung out on the streets. Talking about Kirkpatrick, Tyson said, My father was just a regular street guy caught up in the street world. Kirkpatrick abandoned the Tyson family around the time Mike was born, leaving Tyson's mother to care for the children on her own. Kirkpatrick died while Tyson was in prison. But before his death, and after he abandoned them, the family lived in Bedford-Stuyvesant until their financial burdens necessitated a move to Brownsville when Tyson was 10 years old. Throughout his childhood, Tyson lived in and around neighborhoods with a high rate of crime. According to an interview in details, his first fight was with a bigger youth who had pulled the head off one of Tyson's pigeons. 
Tyson was repeatedly caught committing petty crimes and fighting those who ridiculed his high-pitched voice and lisp. By the age of 13, he had been arrested 38 times. He ended up at the Tryon School for Boys in Johnstown, New York, and Tyson's emerging boxing ability was discovered there by Bobby Stewart, a juvenile detention center counselor and former boxer. Stewart considered Tyson to be an outstanding fighter and trained him for a few months before introducing him to boxing manager and trainer Kus D'Amato. Tyson dropped out of high school as a junior, but was later awarded an honorary doctorate in humane letters from Central State University in 1989. Kevin Rooney also trained Tyson, and he was occasionally assisted by Teddy Atlas, although Atlas was dismissed by D'Amato when Tyson was 15. Rooney eventually took over all training duties for the young fighter. Tyson's mother died when he was 16, leaving him in the care of D'Amato, who would become his legal guardian. Tyson later said, I never saw my mother happy with me and proud of me for doing something. She only knew me as being a wild kid running the streets, coming home with new clothes that she knew I didn't pay for. I never got a chance to talk to her or know about her. Professionally, it has no effect, but it's crushing emotionally and personally. Undoubtedly, going through such a rigorous childhood would have long-term effects on any child. And many feel Tyson hasn't recovered from his rascally childhood. Amidst his many controversies in his adult years was a situation where Mike Tyson was seen brutally beating a random guy during an air flight. Tyson beat him so severely that he had wounds all over his face. <laughs> Hey, Mike, Mike, come on. Let's go stop back. Let's go to the horse, man. Jet Blue, man, flight. Boy just got beat up by Mike Tyson. Turn that way. The young man was seen troubling Tyson, raining words over Tyson's head in an airplane. The baddest man on the planet initially chose to be very silent about his actions. However, the victim was too consistent to avoid a response from the former world heavyweight champion. When Mike Tyson seemed to have had enough of it, he rose to his feet, turned to the seat behind him, and sent this fellow a rain of damaging punches with his bare hands. The guy suffered some facial injuries, and he's just one of the many who might not remember Mike Tyson as a hero and legend, but as a villain who was capable of punishing people for trivial reasons. Talking about the incident in an interview, Mike Tyson jokingly denied being the culprit at the sad moment, but later explained what transpired. That's not me! Did that look like me, man? That's not me! That's not me! It's not me! me. It doesn't look anything like me. <laughs> it's not me! <laughs> Do people bother? Do people try? They want to get like, oh, I... Hey, listen, uh, I'm usually good at these things, at being patient with people, but I just guess it was his number. I was wrong, and that should have never happened, but I asked myself back in my primitive child stages, but I was just irritated, tired, high, pissed off. Despite his divorce cases and many other controversies created by Tyson, the most infamous one in the boxing ring remains the one Jake Paul keeps using against Holyfield in 1997. And Jake Paul has been taking advantage of this infamy in many of his videos on YouTube, where he has over 20 million subscribers. While Jake Paul keeps trying to reopen the bitter memory of the event, Tyson looked to have since moved on. When asked later on by a fan as to why he bit off Evander Holyfield's ear, Mike Tyson responded, I got very frustrated and discouraged and stuff. And he was headbutting me, and I was really mad and I didn't know what to do. And I just exploded and I bit his ear. Matter of fact, I bit it twice. And I'm truly sorry. I, um, I got very frustrated and then discouraged and stuff, and he was headbutting me, and I was really mad, and I didn't know what to do, and I just exploded, and I bit it there. And I, no, matter of fact, I bit it twice, and I'm truly sorry. As a result of biting Holyfield on both ears and other behavior, Tyson's boxing license was revoked by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, and he was fined $3 million plus legal fees. On appeal, the commission voted 4-1 to reinstate Tyson's license on October 18, 1998. Mike Tyson's anger at Jake Paul must be for opening a wound he has since healed from after apologizing to Holyfield and igniting a friendship with him afterwards. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to click on the like button. 
Also, do well to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications to keep receiving updates of our contents on the latest news and actions in the world of boxing. Until next time, peace out.